Welcome to the Audi Garage. In this week's episode, we have a Mark IV Jetta, a Mazda Miata, and a B5 S4 that we're definitely working on. So make sure to stick around if you want to see what I work on this week. So at the end of the day, yesterday, we got a Mark IV Jetta in. Uh, it has some problems running uh, in terms of stalling and just acting a little bit funny. Uh, so hopefully going to check out some details about the math and do a boost leak test to see if that's one of our issues. That's just off the top of my head of what it seems like. So we're going to get started on that. And then uh, I'll keep you up to date with what goes on. So these are the codes I pulled off the Jetta. Uh, as we can see, we have a rear O2 sensor, which is whatever, fine. Uh, but pressure drop between turbo and throttle valve, that makes me think it's a vacuum leak or a boost leak. And then also, when the car is idling, when it kind of settled down, we're only pulling about uh, 15 inches of mercury. So now it's onto a boost leak test and I have a feeling that we might find something this way. So we got the Mark IV buttoned up. Turns out it was mostly a gummed up throttle body. Uh, that was only put in about five or six months ago, so it shouldn't have really been that gummed up. I did notice there was lots of blow-by coming out of the oil cap when I was doing a boost leak test. I did do a compression test just to get a general health of the uh, engine. All came out good. It's about 175, 180, all within spec. Uh, all the cylinders are very close to each other. So it appears as though maybe something in the PVC, PVC system might be malfunctioning and uh, just causing a lot of blow-by to get backed up into the intake and gum up the backside of the throttle body. But either way, it's boosting fine now, it idles fine now, the vacuum's a little low at only 18 inches, but uh, overall it seems to be running 99% better than it was. So with that out of the way, that means we are back to the S4, and I don't know if I talked about it in last week's video, but uh, so to give people an update, if you didn't watch last week's video, lots of misfiring and just general running like garbage issues on this. Found an intercooler blown completely apart, a uh, bunch of boost leaks, and went and did a bunch of wiring checks on the coil packs because we were still getting misfires. Found a uh, number five coil pack, had some iffy wiring that was rubbing up against the valve cover. So fixed that, still had misfires. Finally pulled up the measuring block in VCDS to figure out uh, cam correction factors. And it should be within four correction factors of each other from uh, passenger to driver bank. This one is at 14. So this could definitely be contributing to our misfires, our low vacuum, and our general running like crap. So I've been given the go-ahead to pull the front end off and reset the timing belt. So that's going to be today and tomorrow's job, and then Wednesday will be the Miata. So now we're headed on our way to do some logging on the B6 K04 car. Jetta got picked up, it's running good, uh, everyone's happy with how it's doing. Uh, the vacuum, I thought it was a little bit low, but it was actually due to his boost gauge being a little bit off. At atmosphere, it sits above zero. So that means when it looks like it's at negative 18, it's actually around negative 19, negative 20. So I will pick this up shortly with some pulls in the B6 K04 car. Hey. So as you can see, I have the front of the car off on the S4 to double check the timing. So what I have here is the cam lock bar that you normally use. I've rotated the engine. This is to kind of give an idea of how off it is. So first we can latch that in and then you can see how that's centered in the pinhole. So theoretically when I pull this off, that uh, cam lock tab should be straight. But as you can see, it's rotated uh, up this way. So that's why we're showing the high correction factor. So what I have to do is put the cam lock bar back on, uh, break these loose, and then using a pulley puller, pull these off. And then they will. I'll be able to rotate the cam independently of the gear and put it all in line. But actually, the first thing I'm going to do is get a crank lock pin and put it into the crankshaft that's uh, up and underneath the engine over here. That way I'll know for sure that this is at top dead center. Um, that way it's 100% the correct way to do it. Normally if it's been done properly before you don't really have to use that crank lock pin because that should never really move in relation to this. 
but for good measure, you always do want to use it. So this is to give you an idea how far it is out with the crank lock pin in, and why it's always a good idea to use that when you can. So with that crank lock pin in, and the bar in that one obviously set, it should line up perfectly with this one, but you can see just how far out it is. So I can't remember where I left off on this more than a few days ago. This car has basically been uh, the bane of my existence. So after checking every possible combination of issues uh, for misfires and just misfires all across the board, sometimes isolated to certain cylinders, sometimes not, finally the car just wouldn't crank over. And what I ended up finding is the ground strap from the passenger side frame rail to the engine mount bracket. A uh, shop before me had done a super hack job of trying to repair the threads into the mount bracket and it was a oversized drilled hole for a helicoil that was just kind of wedged in place. So basically the majority of the symptoms were caused by a bad ground. Uh, it, my guess is that it was strong enough to start the car but probably weakened up as uh, the car would vibrate when it's running. So fix that. I had swapped in, uh, you can see the 2.0 coil swap with the, you can't see them, they're hidden under here, but the ICM delete kit essentially and the car was running very well so this morning it's actually saturday morning now i had swapped everything back to stock all oem ignition and the car went back to running very poorly and mind you i had swapped the 2.0 coil packs in and it was still running poorly before i found the ground once i found the ground with these coil packs it ran fine swapped in the oem ignition and we went back to running very very poorly so for the time being i'm leaving on that coil pack setup and um Eventually, I think I'll be doing more work on this car, so I will probably hardwire that in and uh, use them my kit for diagnosis because it's so now that it's running better, we will be loading up a Dominate Stage 1, one and a half, two tune. I'm not sure. Uh, I'll talk to him and we'll see exactly what's going on here, but we might be doing that later today. Next up, I have a Mark IV that needs a new thermostat and control arm and sway bar link maybe? but control arm and thermostat is what we'll be doing. And then hopefully either today or tomorrow, I'll be finishing that Miata and getting that out of the area because I need more room. So I finished up the Mark IV yesterday, uh, kind of turned into a little bit of a disaster. The tie rod end on the spindle was actually cracked. And when I removed the tie rod and put it back in after replacing the control arm, it completely split down the side. Uh, you could see where the crack propagated because there was some rust in that in that crack at the top. Uh, I didn't film any of that because it's super uninteresting and pretty boring to do. Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to finish up the Miata, uh, so that will be at the start of the week. But that's it for this video, so I just want to make sure to remind you guys, subscribe if you haven't, leave a like, comments or suggestions are welcome, and make sure to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and our website. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video, and I'll see you in the next one.